Let's talk about the science of SpongeBob and see how realistic it is. Now I promise there is going to be some real science here just applied to some very stupid situations. Let's start with SpongeBob himself. Sponges are a real animal, not just what you use to clean your bikini bottom in the shower. They are believed to be the most basic animal alive today. Potentially the first animal ever to evolve from a very simple ancestral animal species. SpongeBob is able to walk and talk and do all the things that a human can, even make a burger. But here's where the similarities end. An adult sponge lacks any nervous tissue. This means they have no brain. A real sponge can barely even contract multiple parts of its body together. They are also sessile, which means they are stuck to a rock their whole lives. So Spongebob would actually be stuck to a rock, not able to move, slowly filtering food out of the water. We all know where Spongebob lives, right? Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? So let's think about that one for a second. The density of a pineapple is 6 kilograms per meter cubed, and the density of water is 997 kilograms per meters cubed. This means a pineapple is less dense than water. According to science, this pineapple should float. Let's find out. <laughs> it does, it floated. Science 1, SpongeBob 0. If you've ever watched this channel, you'll know only the most accurate, rigorous scientific testing occurs. SpongeBob's house is obviously hollow. He lives in it. It may change the density. If anything, it would make the pineapple less dense and make it more likely to float. But who knows? Maybe it won't. So I am going to attempt to make Spongebob's house out of this pineapple. Wish me luck. The name's Bob. Spongebob. You can see Spongebob's house finished. Complete with doors and windows. And if we look inside, Spongebob even appears to be home. We have Spongebob's house properly. Let's test again. It still floats. <laughs> I now have chunks of pineapple in my bath. He definitely could not live in a pineapple under the sea. Moving on to Patrick the starfish. What you might not know about the innocent looking starfish is that they are actually terrifying predators. They scour the bottom of the ocean, eating a variety of other organisms. Possibly the worst part about this so far is that part of the starfish's diet is, you guessed it, sponges. And they actually eat snails too. So this harmonious little friendship would probably be far more grim and deadly. What's even more weird is that the starfish has an anus on its head. It has a mouth at the bottom, but its digestive system is inverted the other way as a result. And they can actually eject their stomach out of their bodies to digest the food outside of them. With their prey being partially digested outside of their bodies, possibly still alive at this point, they are then dragged back in to have the digestion finished. Now that's an episode of Spongebob which never got shown. So where is Bikini Bottom located? It's located under the Bikini Atoll in the Pacific Ocean. However, there is a dark history to Bikini Atoll. This is actually the site where the US conducted 23 nuclear tests. Maybe that explains why SpongeBob is able to walk and talk. Bikini Atoll has a maximum depth of 65 meters, well within the range that you would find sponges in the ocean. In fact, Bikini Atoll is home to over 40 sponge species, so SpongeBob wins this one. Moving on to Squidward. Squidward is obviously a squid. Let's ignore the fact that he has arms and legs for now. If Squidward was a real squid, his face would look a whole lot more sinister. Squid are actually voracious predators, but their mouth is where it gets creepy. They have a very sharp beak, which slowly bites chunks out of their live prey. So Squidward's face would actually look more like this. Squidward's favorite hobby is playing the clarinet. If he had a beak, 
there is no way he could actually get the clarinet into his mouth to blow. Secondly, squid have what's known as a siphon. This is where they eject water from to actually move around. So if Squidward was playing the clarinet, he would actually be blowing it out of his siphon. I don't know where that is on Squidward. Lastly on Squidward, we are back to the density of water again. Woo! The clarinet is a woodwind instrument. This requires blowing air through it to make the noise. The density of air is 800 times less than the density of water. For Squidward to be able to blow water through the clarinet would be virtually impossible. Next, we're moving on to Mr. Krabs. He is the burger master of Bikini Bottom, but would he actually be able to make burgers? The first issue is the dexterity required to make a burger. You have to be able to hold all the equipment, move stuff around and handle the meat. A crab has claws which are very easy able to grip things so clearly he would be able to handle all the equipment the harder part of making a burger is the learning and brain power required crabs do in fact have brains but they are obviously very small however lots of research has shown that crabs do have the capacity to learn crabs were given a maze with food as a reward and were shown to remember the maze and learn it they have been shown to actually feel pain and have even even been shown to remember other crabs. However, no other animal in the whole of the animal kingdom has ever been shown to cook their food. So this one goes to science. So where do we stand on SpongeBob? Parts of it are actually accurate and plausible. It's a real place, the organisms that feature in the show are real, and there are definitely some real elements. However, there is lots of things that don't quite match reality. So overall, on this one, science wins.